Welcome back humans. This is Let's Learn Python. I'm Adam. We're going to jump into unit two, topic number five, where we're going to learn about turtle graphics, talk a little bit about nested loops, make things look a little prettier, or at least give us the ability to do something that involves graphics, which is kind of neat this early on in coding. There's lots of people who teach coding and they do a lot of graphics stuff early on. Personally, I'm a, kind of a believer of you learn the foundations and we do a lot of that with text and then we bring in graphics when the time's right. Um, but hey, everyone's got their way and, and there's no wrong way. As long as you're getting in there and you're learning, you're doing the right thing. Before we get into today's stuff, we're going to jump back first and we're going to look at the challenge from the last lesson. So this was the challenge from last time. It was all about this kind of user menu, this text. Mine looks like this, yours might not. But I just wanted to show you a little bit of the code that's going on in the background. So if I go to blue pill, it gives me the, the nice printer, then gives me a second choice. No, I'm not sure, brings me black. Red pill, it ends. So if we look at the code here, I have a string variable inside my while true loop. I'm asking for a string variable that I'm getting from the user, and there's my prompt. You'll notice the use of the special characters. I use backslash ends in here. I wanted to jump to new lines. I wanted to make it look a little nicer. Would you like the red pill or the blue pill? And tell them to enter R slash B. I just use these parentheses to imply it. Then I'm going to compare their choice. Did they pick R? Did they pick B? If they picked R, the whole thing's done. We just print the statement and then we break. And that ends the loop. That ends the program. If they chose the blue pill, I give them their print. And then I take a new choice. You'll notice I used a new variable name. I don't want to override this variable that I've already created called choice. So I call this one choice two. Use the input. Are you sure about your choice? If they chose Y, I say so long and I break. If they chose anything other than Y, then I continue, which just resets the while loop and runs it again, asking the first prompt again. In order to make it to this else, it had to not be R and not be B. So if I made it here, then it was an invalid choice. Try again. And then I continue, which brings me back up and reruns it again. So that's the code structure that I use in terms of this if and else and elif and break and continue uh, for like a user menu or, or a user choice. So it should work well for you for any program where you want to have that, the kind of looping menu where people can make a choice from them, which we're going to do in our unit project as well. So I wanted to go over that before we jump into today's stuff, which is turtle graphics. So looking at turtle graphics, well, turtle graphics, it sounds like a weird thing to say. So we're just talking about graphics, but it's because there's a library in Python called Turtle. And what we're going to do first is we're going to import it. So we're going to import Turtle. Okay, lowercase t. This is a built-in Python library that allows these little graphics windows, these little turtles. Now, they can look like turtles or they can look like arrows. They look like arrows by default, but you can make them look like something else. We're going to set up a window. We do this using a variable name. I called mine win. You could call it something else if you wanted. And this is dot notation. We're going to talk more about this deeper in the course, but... This is accessing the turtle library or the turtle class and from it calling on this function to run. So turtle.screen is going to return a window, which I'm going to store in my win variable. And then Tommy is the name that I gave to my turtle. You could give yours another name. You don't have to give it a real name. You could just call it T equals library dot and then the turtle returns a turtle object, which I'm storing under the name Tommy. And then using that name and the dot notation of calling functions, Tommy dot, Tommy dot, I can call functions on my turtle. And there's so many different functions that I can call. I'm going to go through a couple basics with you and show you how they look. And then we will look at the actual documentation for turtles. So you can see all the functions that are available. So I'm going to do Tommy dot pen size five, give it a nice thick pen size for drawing. I'm going to set Tommy's color to blue. You'll notice it's in quotation marks. So Tommy dot color. And then I'm going to do a for loop. So I'm going to do for I in range four. I'm going to move Tommy forward by 100 pixels. Pixels, remember, are the tiny little dots that make up our screens. And then he's going to turn left 90 degrees. He's going to repeat that four times. So if you can imply, he's probably going to draw a square. And then I add this window exit on click. The exit on click function makes it wait for us to click our mouse on the screen before the graphics window suddenly disappears, which is just helpful for looking at our graphics. Let's run this and we'll see how it looks. And there we can see it pops up this turtle window, this graphics window, and it drew over, up, over, down, and then the arrow turned one last time to the left 90 degrees. And the box was blue. So let's mess with our code a little bit. So here, let's say we want to do a triangle instead. So I'm going to change this to 3. I'm going to change my turn to 120. 
because that'll leave a 60 degree angle on the inside and I'll make it red. So I'm going to save that. Click in this window, it disappears. And I run again. There's my triangle. Okay. So you start to see the idea. Now the turtle is currently a little arrow. That's what it looks like. And then this is its trail that it leaves behind as it moves. So we're back looking at the code now. So now you can see the basic setup of a turtle graphics program. We should look and see what all the methods or all the functions are available to us. We'll talk briefly about a few of them. Then we'll look at a little bit more advanced example that uses nested loops. And then I'll hit you with a challenge. Nice short one today. This website I've linked in the comments. This is the turtle documentation for the actual Python library. This is right on the python.org website. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here and we're going to look mainly at, now you can read through this in more detail. I just want to look at some of the methods. So for turtle motion, you've got move and draw methods. We did forward, we could have shortened it and done FD. Backward, right, left. There's a go to or a set position where we can actually put the X and the Y variables in to send it to a specific position, okay, within our, our space, which is really cool to be able to do that, to be able to move it within our space. Okay, we can also see some other ones like setting the X or Y. We can do a circle, so drawing a circle, just using straight up like Tommy.circle. We can do that. We can check on the state, so what is the position, what is the X coordinate, and get an answer back. We can set the pen either down or up. So that's going to tell us whether it's drawing a trail or not drawing a trail. If we pick the pen up and move it, it's not going to leave a trail behind it. If the pen is down and we move it, it's going to leave a trail. Okay, we can change the color, which we saw. We can change the fill color. There are some functions to do filling. So filling inside of a shape, we can clear, we can do all kinds of stuff. We can hide the turtle, show the turtle, the turtle being the actual symbol in the middle, like mine's an arrow. And then there's some more advanced stuff further down related to the screen and the window that we're not going to get into. So let's come back to our code. Let's just add a little element here. So let's test a couple of those out. Let's add a go to. So Tommy dot go to and let's send them to, oh, I don't know, um, zero comma negative 300. And then let's do a Tommy dot color blue and then a Tommy dot circle. And let's see what happens when we run that. Uh oh, it doesn't like the, because I didn't give it a radius for the circle. Let's do it again. Let's say the radius is 50. So it drew my triangle. It did a go to where it went down to X of zero. We're still at zero, zero here in the middle. X of zero and down 300. Then it drew a circle with radius 50. If I didn't want this line, I could use that pen up function. So before my go to, I can do Tommy dot pen up. And then after the go to Tommy dot pen down. Run that. And there we go. Draws the shape separately. Cool. Now that we've covered the basics of turtle, we're going to jump in and do something a little bit more advanced. So let's run something and then we're going to go back and look at how we did it. I'm going to speed this up so it goes a little faster for you. I've got it set to its max speed right now, but uh, I'll speed it up in the video. Hey, look at that. We did a little spirograph. That's cool. Drew a bunch of circles, shifted them. This is a nested loop problem. Now let's look at the code and see how we did it. All right, so I import my turtle. Nothing fancy there. I set up my window. I set up my turtle. None of this is new. Pen size is five. I did the speed command. Speed zero is going to set it to the fastest speed. Cool. Did that. Set the color to red. Again, nothing fancy. Now my loops. I did for I in range six. So I'm going to do this six times. It's going to run zero, one, two, three, four, five. If I is less than two, so it's the first or the second run, then we're going to make sure Tommy's color is red. If I is L if I is less than four, so that'd be my next two is going to be green. So that would be when I is two and three and then else. So now my I must be four or five and I'm going to set him to blue. Once his color is set, I'm going to run a for loop J in range 360. This is inside of this loop. So these loops are nested. So I'm already doing an I that's going to run six times and then I'm doing a J 360. Now this is going to draw a circle the old fashioned way. So for J in range 360, 
Tommy.forward1, Tommy.left1. So 360 times, it's going to go forward one, left one. Okay? And that's going to create a circle. Now, we could replace this whole loop with a circle command, but this allows us to do other stuff as well. Maybe we don't want to do a circle. Maybe we want to do some other type of drawing here instead. So we could do that inside of our loop. Then you'll notice this line of code. Now, where is this blockwise? Well, this line of code is part of this loop because it's indented, right? But it is not part of this loop. So this line of code is only going to run six times. And what it does is after the first circle is drawn, it's going to shift Tommy to turn 60 to the left and then restart the whole process. So six times 60 is 360. So what happens is Tommy draws a circle, then shifts, draws a circle, shifts, and by the time he's done, he'll be right back to where he started because those left turns of 60, six times, works out to 360 degrees. This is one example of how you can kind of play around with these turtles to create these kind of spire graph things. And you can get really cool with it if you do some Googling around turtle graphic spire graph. There's some crazy cool stuff that people have created. I just wanted to introduce it and kind of show you a little bit of that code structure that we can use to create something like that. And again, the nested loop here is a bit redundant because you could use a circle command, but you can kind of change the way that works in that maybe you don't go the full 360, right? Maybe you go 120 and then you just do it a bunch of times instead. So let's say I just did 120 here. So I'm not going to do the full circle. I'm just going to do a third of the circle, right? And then maybe I want to take this range and instead of just doing this, you know, six times, maybe I want to do it 60 times and I only want to turn six each time. And then I'm going to take these to 2040. We're just going to add a Tommy.go to 00 with a pen up before it and a pen down after. And now we're going to try running that. So we get a third of a circle, shoot back, turn, third of a circle, shoot back, turn, third of a circle. We're going to watch this go. I'll fast forward it here. There we go. So you see the way that worked. Did it all in red, then all in green, then all in blue. You can do all kinds of wild stuff. Now that we're done talking about turtle graphics, a little bit about nested loops and nested loop structure, indentation, I want to talk about your challenge. I want you to use a circle, I want you to use turtle, and I want you to make me a set of these. We weren't able to have the Olympics this year because of COVID, all that fun stuff, so let's honor them. Let's do some Olympic rings. Here we go. So we can draw the Olympic rings using the same commands that we just talked about, using turtles, colors, set positions, circle commands, maybe loops. We can even make this better once we learn functions. Uh, but yeah, this is what I want you to do for the challenge. I want you to make me some Olympic rings. Good luck with it. Uh, I think it'll go fine. This is a nice little wrap up before we do our end of unit project, which is what we're going to be doing next. So thanks for sticking with me. Hopefully you got some of the turtle graphics. You can have a little bit of fun with it. You can get pretty interactive. If you look at some cool turtle graphics projects online, there's some amazing stuff people have done with turtle graphics that just get a little bit more advanced. Check them out. See if you can mess with their code. Understand their code. That's a huge part of learning how to code. Like the video, share, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up as we're going through this course. I'm glad to have you here. Hit me up in the comments if you have questions. Bye, humans. We will see you soon.